Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling Season 2 Episode 1 Millwall 3 <laughs> So yes, um, first episode of the new season decided to s start splitting things up because of the fact that, well, last season I guess ended with a year-end wrap-up so it made sense to me um, And if I haven't done anything for a long time other than retrospective Yeah and the retrospective is in its own season. Um, but anyway, so yeah, same format as before. We're going to talk a little about uh, music aside from the album covered that we've been listening to. And we'll be covering the new Baby Metal album. Well, I say new, it was out two months ago, but we've had a lot of other shit to deal with. And it took me this long to finally come around to the concept of listening to anything by Baby Metal at least willingly. Turns out they're actually were both kind of hipsters because we knew about them back when they released like, their first song thanks like, to a friend of ours. Yeah. But it's, like, we could be back then and be like, hey look, we're the first fans around, screw you guys. I really liked it when it wasn't nice or it wasn't one popular or whatever. Yeah. And neither of us really cared that much. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. We both found most of their stuff... Well, I think in both our cases the key problem was the whole squeaky vocals aspect. So, yeah, if I want to speak of vocals, I'd actually listen to actual idol music. Yeah, or Within Temptation. Or <laughs> Bring Me the Horizon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but enough of bashing shitty music, let's talk about good music. So, yeah, what have you been listening to aside from the Hurt albums? Uh, good music, generally. I mean, I've been looping at each year by New Order, because mm. I got it stuck in my head again. Um, yeah. It's just constantly going round and round and round and round and round. That song is perfect. Uh, check out the new Marco Saki album, which actually is probably the best thing she's done so far. Mm -hmm. Good. And listen to a lot of Lizzie Sterling. So, yeah. yeah, which I introduced you to. Yeah, I actually looked into that a long time ago. I was into the Gary Oda album as well, because I came out like a month ago. Yeah. So. Maybe we should cover that. <laughs> but it would be nice since no one wanted to know who she is. Mm. It's like, she's just. Went to the door and the stuff and just seems to be ignored by everyone. Which is really sad because she's got a really nice voice. Hmm. Uh, Why are you not popular? I don't know. I can say that about a lot of bands, really. But so can I. Even, what do you mean? She's Japanese, but even in Japan, she doesn't seem to be particularly popular. Hmm. Which is sad. Hmm. I think something they're not popular outside of Japan. I mean, not even popular in your home country, there's definitely something not popular. Yeah. I mean,. Some bands, you, you find out about them becoming popular in other countries, and you're sort of like, why there? <laughs> That's how that happened before. I mean, Zed Carriota herself has performed in Germany before. I was like, Germany, really, what? Yeah. I mean, how did that happen? Yeah. I mean, have you ever heard of the band Mr. Big? I've heard the name, don't know anything about them. Uh, they were basically sort of like a, a super group of almost famous people. <laughs> It's like somehow simultaneously the best and most depressing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, they're, they're the ones that did the song that goes, I'm the one that wants to be with you. Oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, yeah. And basically, they didn't really get big. Aside from in one country, they're uh -huh. big in Japan. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was one of those, okay, why Japan? Well, it's kind of the same kind of way that things like Trigger Studio make, like Kill the Killer or whatever, seem to be way more popular outside Japan than they are in Japan. Mm. Um, uh, music I've recently been listening to, it's also Lindsay Sterling. I mean, I've been trying to... Well, I've been practising violin by playing along with her stuff, and it's one of those, Oh, God! Why do you have to change the string so many times in a minute? <laughs> You've heard her music, you know what it's like. I do. Hopefully we get a chance to see her playing or something. Hmm. We just need to barrage her with sort of We want to see you live! Please. I've been here before, we can't here anyway. Well, I'm not sure. Has she been over here before? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty sure that at least one person was talking about the other day that she went to see her live last year or something. Hmm. I'll have to invest. I'll have to investigate. Maybe there's some people that, you know, actually, you know, live in America, so that makes sense, but yeah. I'm pretty sure there's at least one person commented saying, oh, yeah, I saw her live in London or whatever. Hmm. She'd certainly deserve it. She's got the talent for it. 
Um, aside from her stuff, also been listening to um, things like Northern Kings. Um, for those who don't know what Northern Kings are like, basically most of their music, well, they they are an actual super group of sort of like lead singers and um, guitarists and whatnot of power metal bands. Um, you've got things like um, the male vocalist from Nightwish, um, the lead singer from um, Sonata Arctica, all guys like that. And um, they do power metal covers of various pop songs. So you'll have things like Kiss from a Rose, and it's turned into this huge operatic, oh dear, oh my god, this is it's unbelievably amazing and I don't know how this works but it does and um, they also did a cover of Sledgehammer by um, Peter Gabriel and it's one of those th I, I like this I, I don't I'm not sure it should really work but I like this talking of weird covers actually if you go to uh, Carl that's a buddy name Kai and whatever name is, there there is um it's kind of like a folk metal combined with a bit of black metal and a bit of old man about that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And yet, recently, they actually did a complete rearrangement and cover of a Miley Cyrus song. Which one? I don't know you, bro. Well, I don't. I don't know it. Neither do I. But they decided, yeah, just to rework it for themselves and cover it. It's like, okay, well, that's <laughs> a really weird thing to do. Yeah. Also listen to a bit of Strapping Young Lad just to keep my old school Devin cred up to date. <laughs> I'm sitting here in a Devon Townsend t-shirt and I've got a Devon Townsend memory stick right by me. I'm not that obsessed. <laughs> yeah. Also I've got a Ziltoid costume right ne right across from me. And a Ziltoid hand puppet right behind me. Um, but yeah, it's it's been interesting in terms of what I've been listening to recently. What's new Perturbator? Of course. Ah, yeah. And a um, crap ton of Dutch albums that I got recently, mostly yeah. uh, kind of electronic and metal ones. Hmm. I still so like. I, thread, I was like, oh yeah, I need to all of these. <laughs> I still need to actually listen to the um, Perturbator album. I've had it downloaded for a few weeks now, and it's sort of like, why have I not listened to this yet? Because I've got all well, this... They... Huh? It's like I have a playlist right now of things I haven't listened to in my library, and it's days long. Yeah, well... I have so much I want to to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure between us, there's probably loads of music that we haven't listened to, and when we finally get round to it, it'll be a case of, why do I have this... <laughs> So you come out and it's like, oh, I remember buying this album in 1994. <laughs> I didn't even I have didn't money buy. in 1994. I was, I was four. <laughs> but that's the thing. You know being older than me. Okay, I was four or five, depending on what point in the year it was. It's around that somewhere. Yeah. I mean, bear in mind, I'm only three months older than you, so it's not exactly like there's that much leeway for me to be five years old in 1994. There's more than I have, so I have like days. <laughs> yes, Jesus. <laughs> yes, I turn these, these four CDs into a thousand. Anyway, shall we get to the album? Indeed. Get to the album sounds like a name of a song. It sounds like a It sounds like a psycho stick title. It does, yes. Either an album that or some battle not special mm. Get to the album, get to the album before play really loud. Move it in. You better buy it. Was it downloaded? Because yeah, you can tell it if you want, we don't really care, but buy it please. Anyway So yeah, this'll be a bit of an interesting review because the versions we have, this is where we get into complicated region locking bullshit. Because the versions we both technically have that's in the right track order are the English release. But we both also got Japan release versions of certain songs. 
people have decided to, you know, have a song which in one version is in English, one version is in Japanese, and the other one just straight up has a different song in one place. Yeah. So. Um, so how are we going to do it? We're going to review it in order of the English album, but we are going to cover the two so- two songs, you know, the Japanese. Two, in inverted commas. Yeah. The one song that is... <laughs> the one song. <laughs> yeah. Well... The one song that is actually completely different between Japan and English releases, and the one that is different language versions, so we can say how well it matches up between versions. Um, obviously, we can't really do lyrical analysis because people have been having an impossible time actually doing any lyrical write ups, and we don't speak Japanese. The problem there is that there is a Japanese link here, like, um lyric booklet but it doesn't include the songs that are on the English version <laughs> so the yeah you can get the lyrics for all the songs apart from the two well the English version presumably probably has the same lyrics of the one mm. but Gust of Dawn which only is only on the English version does not have any official lyrics which is kind of absurd like, what the of Dawn is really really high pitched in that song it's like I don't know what they're saying I mean they got a snippet here and there but uh, anyway, what, it so definitely is in English. Just it's more more English than English. Yeah. Well, so I think the main singer Sue could actually sing in English, but the other two can't as well, and a lot of the vocals are done by the other two. Mm. So, to be fair, we have fair. heard we have heard far worse English than is on this album. Both in series and films and music and all over the places. Yeah. So. It's... <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so first song. Road to Resistance. Yeah, <laughs> Road of Resistance. I do not That's like this song. Really, uh, they released this really before the album came out. It's got kind of a single. Yeah. So. Yeah. They even announced the album. I think it might be different. Hmm. I think it actually was released before they even announced the album. Um. Yeah. It was released before they announced the album. It was sort of a weird. You know, they and they released the song, and then like several months later, they finally announced the album, and it's sort of like, what? Um, but yeah, uh, this is one of their collaborative pieces with Dragon Force. I must say, I was congratulating Dragon Force on finally writing more than one song. <laughs> Just yeah, about. Yeah. It sounds well. The, the intro is not bad, but after like a minute in, it just becomes standard Dragon Force wanking. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's so frustrating because when it opens up, I'm sort of like, okay, this could be an interesting album, and then Dragon Force comes in and ruins it all. <laughs> Problem is, is that Dragon Force they have the technical skills, but their songwriting is uh, basically just get like 500 chords and slam them into a minute. Yeah. In the random order. Yeah, and that's actually a good point. That that's the key problem with this song. It suffers from the wall of noise problem, where you know they're just trying to make as much sound as possible, not actually paying attention to the technical quality. The problem is the wall of noise needs to be either one or two things: a non-existent, mm. or b you can't discern individual notes. Yeah, it's kind of halfway between the two of them. Yeah. The individual notes are there, but they're so clustered together and scattered, it just sounds like a mess. Um, more on that later in the album. It's kind of like having a wall of noise, but the wall doesn't have any cement between the bricks. Yeah, that's actually a disturbingly accurate analogy. But yeah, this song is, as I said, it's one of the weakest songs in the album. Yeah, um, I gave it a 2 out of 5, because it's just, it's Dragon Force. <laughs> Dragon Force out of 5. The singing's actually pretty good, but once again, I can't hear the singing over all this wanking. Yeah, so that's <laughs> two technical wanks out of five. <laughs> you could, I mean, the thing is, you could pretty much replace the lyrics with those of Through the Fire and Flames, and absolutely fuck all would change. <laughs> Probably true, yeah. But if she can't do Japanese, maybe they are just singing Through the Fire and Flames in Japanese, aren't they? <laughs> 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 it could be. I mean, we we don't know. I mean, I know karate words in Japanese and how to say idiot and thank you. I know the occasional word here and there, but I'm not even. I don't know. I can't pick up anything in a sentence yeah. much, apart from the word. Yeah. So. If if they were singing in Spanish or German, 
possibly French, I might be able to pick up more. But Japanese, <laughs> I don't know. Thankfully, I don't really care either. Yeah. So, um, so next song, Karate. It opens interestingly enough. It, I mean, it does it's remind me. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they even did that. Hmm. The opening sound is really weird. It's kind of yeah. the riff kick. That's quite like that riff. It's quite nice and chunky. Yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me of sort of a bit of better Slipknot. You know, when they're actually showing that they have technical skill. Cause... Yeah, a little bit of Pantera, actually. Yeah. Um, I I'm just meaning it. Because it's a very new metal sounding song. Um, it is. I mean, ultimately, unfortunately, it feels too chaotic for my liking. Well, it's, it's probably not all the songs in the album. It's probably got the one with the moves that they kind of squeaky out a little bit, causing it as well. Mm. I mean, luckily, it does have a lot of Sue actually singing, and I like Sue's voice. It's like the one thing I could gather from the first album I really liked is her singing. It's actually really good. Mm. But if I'm wondering if I the first album, is most of the songs don't use it much. Yeah. I think one of the things I like a lot about the second album is her singing is actually a lot more used. Mm. And that's what I like about it. Yeah. And on the first album, there's like, what? Mickinson used it quite a lot, as did uh, Wonder of Nightmare, which is probably why I like those two songs best. Mm. But, unfortunately. Uh, it's a lot more second album. Yeah. Unfortunately, is it Mickinson that is all. Oh, was that one of their first singles? Uh, it was an early single, yes. Yeah. It wasn't the first one, it was like the fourth or something. But yeah, but, yeah I, the problem... I would have enjoyed that more had they had less of the fucking squeaky singing! <laughs> that will... Well, I, I will clarify now that that will be a repeated complaint, unfortunately. <laughs> There's... It's still a, a bit too present on this album for me to give it a glowing review. <laughs> On the hand, it is turned down a lot. It's yeah. Like give me chocolate, but I like, cannot stand give me chocolate. I think it pisses me off. Mm. Oh uh, god, give me chocolate. Like, what a mess. Yeah. I it's annoying because uh, every time they do a live somewhere, it's just like one or two songs they play. They always fucking play it. Mm. It's like no, play actually. You got actually a good bunch of decent songs now. Play all those. Yeah. Um. So Karate gets two point five chaos oh, spheres okay. out of five. Huh? <laughs> It was one of the kills everyone, Sonic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Karate was the lead single for the album as well, so mm. I think it was released just before it came out. I mm. quite like it personally, but it's never really the best on the album. Mm. Uh, um, Awadama Fever. This is... I really like the song. It's super catchy. What? And, you know, like, how the first album, a lot of the catchiness there, I feel like it give me chocolate because it's ridiculously catchy. Mm. But this other hand, this is actually not only ridiculously catchy, but also actually good. Yeah. The thing is, when I listen to it, I just think, meanwhile, at a... Oh, God. I'm trying to think of their name. Uh, oh, um, I can't really say that. Well, I said, meanwhile, at a 1990s rave, but I'm... Um, <laughs> did Firestarter. Oh, Progedy. Yeah. Meanwhile, at a Progedy rave... <laughs> I can kind of hear it, actually, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I quite like it as well because of how weird it sounds. You know, it's... I think it's the, the lyrics are... They make me think of Kiari. Yeah. I mean, a lot. A lot more metal. Yeah. I mean, this is where they sort of like... They've got high-pitched vocals, but they don't have squeaky vocals, which makes it work really well. They are actually singing rather than just making up not just noises. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just... I don't know the vocalist well enough to know who it is, but... Oh, I don't know. I can usually recognise Sue's vocals, but mm. the other two I can't distinguish. Well, I Sue... Them and I don't really care that much. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Sue's vocals are kind of unique. Yeah, they are. You know, a 14-year-old who's able to death growl is kind of... A 14-year-old girl who's able to death growl. Yeah. Uh, she... Is she 14? I... I know she's quite young. She was at one point. Yeah. I think she's older than her. I think she started out as 14. She's probably like 17 now, I think. Another two about fifteen, I think. Uh, let me I just. Don't remember exactly. uh, let me just check if I can. Uh, I'm not sure. still eighteen-year-old who's able to death growl, and when she started out, she, when she started out, she was twelve. <laughs> Maybe it has been around quite a while. Yeah. So. Uh, 
Um, and when the first album was released, it was two thousand uh, two thousand fourteen. So she would have been um, sixteen then. It's very difficult. I I mean this in a genuine sense. It's very difficult to tell how old some Japanese people are. Yeah, this is true. I mean, well, Asian people in general. I mean, if you've ever watched the Gilmore Girls, uh, it turns out that the best friend of Rory is the same age as Lorelai in real life. <laughs> and it's all sort of like, so it's a it's someone who's in her late thirties playing a sixteen-year-old. <laughs> what? Yeah, this kind of thing happens a lot. I've noticed this. I've seen Japanese singers all over, oh, I wonder how old they are. It turns out they're like twice out or something. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of like 19. I'm actually, like 34. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Awadama Fever is. That's a fun song, which is what. You know me. One of the key things I ask of any music is for it to be fun. Mm. I think the kind of thing I've been living, trying to do from the start is kind of a, a more fun type of metal. Mm. And. This is probably the first one that actually managed to properly pull it off, I think. Yeah. Personally, at least. Yeah. So that's 3.5 1990s raves out of 5. <laughs> 2 5 fire starters out of 5. <laughs> um, next song, Yava. Yava is good. It's... Like, the thing is, I remember listening to it the first time, and I got through the Abba and Yava together, and I was like, yes, this is good. This <laughs> For me... It's a very anime intro sounding song. It is just. It's, it's got the kind of weird jazz beat kind of thing going on there. Yeah. Mm. I really like the sort of hard rock metal sound that it's got, but the rhythm and style is a very jazzy, you know, mixing it up every so often. Well, so I, I, once again, this is something they've done a lot better with the second album, is they're just, they're dizzy, just bouncing all over loads of different subgenres and stuff. Yeah. Well, still kind of having the same kind of sound, but also mixing it up a hell of a lot. Mm. And then the first time, a lot of it did sound very, very similar. It kind of case of, it was, hey, metal, metal, idol, idol, metal, idol. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, a bit of power metal, a bit of progressive metal, a bit of metal core, a bit of new metal, a bit of folk metal, as I come to the middle. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I really like it, and it's one of those, this is, this should be the standard, you know, between Awadama Fever and Yava, this should be sort of the baseline for what they're aiming for, you know. Obviously, I would want them to do better than this, but this is... But this is. If it's all this kind of quality, I would be like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. I would call myself clearly call myself a fan, and I'll be fine with that. Yeah. But you can't just call myself a fan now anyway, because I like this album. But yeah, like, this... there's a lot of people who are way more into it than I am. Mm. I mean, it's like they're really not that amazing. They're definitely getting there. Mm. But it's not like yeah. Yeah, but this is this should definitely be the the average. You know, it a bit like um, you know how with hurt. Uh, their average would be things like better and um, the more stripped down version of Falls Apart, that sort of thing. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. But yeah, this is where we sort of get to, you know, you've improved my expectations, now you need to continue improving my expectations. <laughs> well, the next song, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next song, Amore. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, you want to rip it to shreds so that you can stab it into the faces of Dragon Force! <laughs> I actually made a tell my uh, co-host who is now just exploded on the floor <laughs> with pure rage. Uh, oh. waiting for this. <laughs> oh, um, before we continue with this, just for dovetail for Yabba, uh, that's 3.5 Gurren Lagans out of 5. <laughs> it does kind of, kind of like a, yeah, some of our days, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, I'm waiting for a good shirt right <laughs> But yeah, Amore, this song eats my taint! 
This song is the epitome of everything wrong and dull about, you know, the worst aspects of Dragon Force meets the worst aspects of baby metal. Fuck this song! Fuck it hard! Fuck it with a rusty chainsaw wrapped with rusty barbed wire that's on rusty flames! <laughs> I don't know and I don't care. Fuck this song. <laughs> I really I, uh, hate. I'm... The rating for the head is zero bullet. No, the five bullets to the head out of five. <laughs> I was actually contemplating lowering the score of this song, and I've already given it a zero. <laughs> <laughs> How much is someone just reading on the Soviet Eurovision this year? Someone just wrote minus one for one of the songs. But yeah, just I, I, I remember. I mean, at first, at first I was bored. Then I was really bored. Then I was inconsolably angry with how interminably dull and repetitive and just everything that encapsulates the technical skill but complete lack of anything to say that Dragon Force has with their instrumentation. Well, it is very... I don't really have much to say about it because there's, there's nothing particularly interesting about it. Yeah. It's kind of a sad story. <laughs> I was kidding, as with Road of Innocence, the case of, hey, who have this band where, like, okay, not is the band and the girls, but the girls are kind of like the front book, the kind of front page of everything. It was, oh, we got some because of the girls. And then half this song is just literally just random guitar wanking for no apparent reason. Yeah. It's sort of like, was there any point in Baby Metal even being in this song? <laughs> Seriously. I'm not trying to be a dick here, I'm genuinely asking, was there any point? Because I bet I can barely tell that they're singing. <laughs> Too much guitar. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, this is, the only thing to worth a while about it's a two parts where it pretty much is just singing. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, there's no actual guitar going on here. It's actually, I can actually hear a song now. Yeah. <laughs> but then for the rest of the song it's just wanky guitar jizz I don't mind my guitar wanking I mean I'm a fan of Dream Theater and Ingrid Malmsteen but at least they actually have the ability to write songs well the thing is Ingrid Malmsteen when he does songs it's one of those he it's like he crafts the lyrics around each note <laughs> so it's one of those whoa was it as good for you as it was for me <laughs> But, uh, just yeah. fuck this. I mean, like, when you get the Dragon Force, I actually liked them when I first heard them. But then, that's before I, you know, heard more than one song. I realised that every song they've done sounds like fucking insane. How old were you when you first heard them? When the, the uh, after the Fire of Flames came out, I think it was so probably, like, 17 tops. Um, or something like that. I can't remember how old it was. I think, it, I think it's older than that. Oh, fair enough. So look. I love how I just search through the fire and flames, and the first thing I get is a YouTube video with a lyric that's whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's a bit older than that. Um, it came out in two, um, mid-2006. Okay, I know. And recorded 2005, I think. I think the album came out in 2006. Mm. Single work out. Uh, yeah, it was recorded. Album, yeah, it was recorded 2005, released 2006. So I was like, 15? Yeah, 15, 16. I think I was 17 when I first heard it, but that's because one of my friends played it to me. And, yeah, that was really good when I was 17, and I didn't know any better. Fuck this song! Ugh. But yeah, so zero dragons and fires out of... <laughs> It's all about like dragons of fires for them for some reason. They were trying about it. It's like having a Martha Vikings, but you know, without any of the interesting thing about Vikings. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's zero zero fairies and dragons out of five. But so how can you sing about dragons without being interesting? I don't get it. Yeah. Well, how can you be a band called Dragon Force without being interesting? 
feel like you're listening to them sounds like you're being constantly burned with the infinite fires of a dragon. Hmm. Well, that sounds oh, pretty metal, my though. Ears can't, like, my ears can't cope with 5,000 notes played in a random order at the time. Mm. It's not surprising. Actually, I think there might be a dragon in D&D &D that uses um, sound as its breath weapon. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking metal, actually. Yeah. I, I'll have to look into that, but I think there might be. Well, the dragon turns onto you and just blares Christopher Lee Charlemagne at you. Oh, God! Now... <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one of those epitome of metal. It's Christopher Lee singing metal about Charlemagne. Even more so if it's also being shouted at you through the mouth of a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> if you want metal about that, there's the metal dragon was just made of spikes and covered in blood. Well, there are metallic and dragon. Fire. There are metallic dragons. So that's how you make it more metal. I'm being written by the entire band of Man of War. Yeah. Who <laughs> also wearing leather and harnesses and not much else apart from oil. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even us making jokes. You look at any of their album covers and it's sort of like, wow, that's gay. It was pretty fucking gay. It was <laughs> a pretty fucking metal. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, the main look of metal was pioneered by a gay guy, so... Um, but anyway, the next song, which is a complete reversal, Metatero! As usual, uh, you know, mentioning a bad song means we tangent. You don't want to talk about that. Yeah. But the next song is literally the complete reverse in opinion. Because. Literally, Tourassas. It makes you really think of Tourassas. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Teresas is the main one that comes to mind, and it's sort of like, Viking metal! Fucking Viking metal meets baby metal, and baby metal actually singing in a way that doesn't make me want to shred my ears off. <laughs> now... This song is probably the best on the album, I'd say. Yeah, well, I definitely... Yeah, I definitely <laughs> say it's the best on the album. I will. I do have one minor caveat, and this is something that I pointed out to you, and I'm sure you can now never unhear this. The melody of the yeah. chorus kind of sounds a bit like Clementine, and it's one of those. When I first heard it, I was sort of like, "What does that melody remind me?" Oh, oh God, why? Why does it have to remind me of that? But it does, like, you know, but, but, yeah, it's so awesome. We can't really care. Yeah, it's one of those. I can forgive them for it. I mean, it doesn't sound exactly like Clementine. It's just it's one of those you put them side by side and you'd go. Eh, there are similarities. I can't unhear that. Um, I think it's a good example of them getting inspiration from uh, certain bands, but not actually direct copying. Yeah, it's not like Swagger Jagger, where the melody was Clementine. And the fact that I even mentioned that piece of shit makes me want to take an acid bath. Metal as well, to be fair. I'm so metal like beef and acid. <laughs> what am I, the Wicked Witch of the West? Oh, wait, no, that was Alkaline. And the Wicked Witch of the West bathed in vinegar. Mm. So that's alkaline, not acid. Anyway, um, enough of the chemistry lesson. Um, but yet, Metatro, for me, it sounds like the sort of song that you would play if you want to set the stage for an epic battle. Indeed, and I know I'm a pretty big fan of kind of folk metal and stuff. I mean, things like Corpus Clarny, for example. Yeah. I'm just control, like I don't want. Tourist Assassin, of course, I mentioned already. Mm. Um, I don't want to stop some things like Agalop and stuff like that, but not quite the same way. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never see them live again. This is in like twice, thankfully. Yeah. But, yeah. This is really, really good. Yeah. And once again, it's, kind of, it's got the kind of high pitch record you'd expect, but it works well with the song. Yeah. It's the high pitch, not squeaky pitch. Mm. Um, Metatero gets. Six bearded Vikings out of five. Yes, I can do. 
Yes, I can do six out of five because this is my own rating system, so fuck it, there are no rules. I think you mean six out of five because of Vikings. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, next, we've got From Dusk Till Dawn. This I'm... wasn't from Metal Tower, this may be my favourite song, personally. It's not my favourite song, a few of the later ones go above it, but I do enjoy it. My main problem is the sort of weird dubstep breakdown that it has during the second half. Yeah, the breakdown is kind of out. It kind of comes out of nowhere, but on yeah. the other hand, I don't mind it too much because it's relatively short. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, the, the key reason I have a problem with it is mainly because it kind of puts me in mind of Shatter Me, you know. Yeah. I mean, the problem I have with that song is the dubstep breakdown and it's sort of like, I could like this song if not for the dubstep. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Mm. Um, I really wish I could understand what the hell these girls were saying because it's ridiculously high pitched vocals. Hmm. It's not even squeaky vocals in this case. It's actually just really, really high pitched. Yeah, it's and also the speed they're singing at. Hmm. Um, is really quite fast. Comparison to a lot of other songs on the album. Hmm. Was that kind of kind of oh, 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 it does, I really like that as well. Yeah. Um. <laughs> It does feel sort of. I mean, the title from dusk till dawn. Of course, that's for anyone like us. That's going to evoke sort of the uh, whole idea of vampires. Um, the twin. Thanks, Tarantino. Yeah, the Tarantino movie, all things like that. Um, was that a Tarantino movie, or did he just star in it? It was. No, it was partly him. Um, I think it was partly him and partly uh, Rodrigo. I think. I know Rodrigo. I don't know if involved in the creation of it. I don't know whether it was as a director or what. Uh, was involved in it. It was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez. Uh, Tarant Tarantino did the screenplay. Ah, there we go. I knew they were both involved in it pretty heavily. Mm. But it does feel sort of. I mean, one of the things that's kind of become inextricably linked with vampires is the whole nightclub scene, you know, dark, mysterious stranger that you see across the room, that whole scenario. Thanks, Blade. <laughs> Good old Blade. <laughs> Although in that this case... Is not Blade <laughs> huh? This is not think of Blade Trinity. No, I'm not. Fortunately, I've not seen either Blade 2 or Blade Trinity, so... It's just not too bad. Blade Trinity is a mess. Mm. So. I've heard from a lot of people that it is. But anyway, it does give the feel of sort of like a vampire club, that sort of thing, musically speaking. As we say, lyrically, we have no fucking clue what they're saying. Supposedly, they are actually singing in English, because this is one of the songs that was on the English release, as opposed to the Japanese release. You can hear parts of it, it's just that some parts of it are just indecipherable. Yeah, and when you do hear the bits of it that you can hear, you're sort of like, I'm not sure what they're meaning. Well, then the one part, which is what dubstep bit goes, something like, life is a dream and dreams always break. That's a pretty cool lyric. Yeah. And that does feel very vampire sort of theme-y. It's not confirmed that's what it is, but some other people have mentioned that's what I think it is. It does sound like that, so... Yeah. Um, it's a bit so. Yeah. Uh, not much more for, on my part to say about this. Do you have any more? Um, I don't think I have anything really else to add, other than the fact that I just... It's probably the one song that actually we used to have to be the first time right after the Metal Tower. It's got a different kind of atmosphere to everything else. It's a lot slower. Not yeah. Probably, but the music is a lot slower and everything has come before it. Mm. So, because the posture is Dragon Force, it's like 10,000 BPM. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's more, less trying to know be through oh, harsh metal and more kind of more atmospheric metal, if I'm like. Yeah. Being, being a fan of, say, post metal, for example, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of just fits with me quite nicely. Um, I think the interesting initial breakdown, whilst it does have dubstep elements, it doesn't actually go straight into that as well, which is interesting. Mm. So it kind of has like, this metal break, and it just does it a bit slightly after that. It's odd. It makes me wonder what they would have done if they hadn't just added that wobbing in. Yeah. But thankfully, it's really, really short. I mean, it kind of just goes. <laughs> it's just. It's just a little out of place. Yeah, it's one of those. This feels like it could have been left out of this and nothing would have changed. You could, have, you could have been skipped and probably made it actually sound even better overall. Mm. I really like the song in the first place. So that would be yeah, I like I like the song as well. It's just it's not one of my favourites. Um, obviously, it's not going to be my favourite because my favourite has six out of five. So 
<laughs> it's not like you're going to find two songs on the album that are so good they go above the out of five. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then again, that's be- twenty-six out of five. <laughs> then again, I am a fanboy of Devin Townsend, so. Yeah, this is what I expect from you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dusk Till Dawn gets three and a half vampires out of five. Next song, GJ. What is this? This is weird. <laughs> Why in the Francis Drake fuck is this? <laughs> this is most definitely new metal, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like... It sounds like sort of Slipknot or Korn are starting to play. And then... I I don't even know what is going on. It, it, it starts out new metal And then it's contrasted with what the fuck is... What in the fuck I don't know? Piss, you are going to fucking burn for suggesting this album just based on this song. It's true, I just put music to the song and see how much you hate it. Oh yeah, you said you were waiting to see my reaction to it. <laughs> it was a pretty good reaction. And li- I was, when I was in the shower listening to it, I was still going, What the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't even have a score for it because I don't even know how to gauge how I feel about it because there are bits that I think oh that sounds pretty interesting and then there are bits that are sort of like what the hell <laughs> well there's a combination of corn limp biscuit actual growly metal and all manner of other random stuff thrown in there yeah it's sort of like a bit slight um Oh, I don't even know how to describe the music that's backing the chorus. Can you think of a way? Well, well there's actually a tree of Calvin in there as well. Hmm? There's a Calvin in there as well. I wanted this right before it broke down. Was Christopher Walken producing the song? It's only just water, water, water. Dink! Oh, I. I... I honestly do not know how I feel about this song. I cannot give it a, a score because it's sort of like on the one side I'm sort of like yeah this would be pr- this is pretty cool and on the other I'm sort of like huh I huh enough of the score of the song no nucleidism out of ten <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right I still don't know what to think of it. I don't even know whether I like it or hate it or I'm indifferent to it or industry or confused by it or what. Exactly. It's it's that bizarre a song. So I suppose it... I mean, that is one thing to the positive of it. It at least makes you think about wh- how you might feel about these different genres blending. It's a very odd solution of stuff. Mm. But yeah, it does catch my attention. Mm. Military in a good or a bad or any conceivable possibility of ways, but mm. um, yeah. Next song, Sis Anger. I thought this was baby metal, not fucking Bayamoth. <laughs> yep, this is straight up the heaviest thing on the album, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining about that. It's it's one of those holy shit, it's Bayamoth. <laughs> Or at least it wouldn't be out of place in one of their concerts, if not for the vocals. Oh yeah. I mean, that is, that is my one complaint. Again, my one complaint is the squeaky vocals. It's, it's, it's kind of like you and as vocals, so it's way high pitched. Hmm. Well, they are with these actually singing rather than just squeaking. Hmm. It's just the kind of juxtaposition between the heaviness of the actual backing metal combined with the high vocals. Just, Kinda of threw me off guard the first time I heard it. Yeah. I'm not used to it now. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those cases of they make it work. I, as I say, I'm not a fan of the squeaky vocals, but they do at least make it work. Hmm. It's kind of thing that you think, you look at the combination of something. There's no way this can work, and somehow it does. Mm. 
Which I was giving competition for actually making that combination work because it, it shouldn't. <laughs> Always a music should not be possible, but they managed to pull it off somehow. Hmm. That in itself is pretty impressive. Yeah. It's pretty short though, unfortunately. Yeah. Which they went. And again, maybe it's just here for the sake of it. Well. You know, it, maybe if it was longer, it'd just get boring after a while, so maybe that shortly enough it helps it. Well, if as we've noticed, the Dragon Force songs are yeah, the Dragon Force songs are the longest on the album. Too much guitar writing. Yeah, with yeah, the longest on the album, with the exceptions of Tales of the Destinies and the One. Hmm. Could be like the longest thing to write at the start and right at the end. Hmm. Pretty much. Uh, I think it's one of the things that I was thinking about. You know, some of the reviews or whatever. And because of you know, how many albums we've done with the first song would be one of the weakest. Hmm. Happening. Yeah. I think I think the exception to that rule seems to be Faith No More. Yeah, Faith No More opens very, very well. Um, Faith No More, Devin Townsend, but then again, he he's very he good. Doesn't. Yeah, he's very good at making sure everything works. I mean, he's he's quite obsessive compulsive when it comes to getting all of that down. And that's not me saying that, it's him saying it. He has admitted to being very obsessive about making sure everything works. I mean, that's why you will have delays on his albums, because it's all like, no, I need to get this one bit right. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. Mm. Seeing how a lot of his stuff sounds like, he's obviously done a pretty good job of it as well. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he's the... He's that place. Yeah. He is the main mixer on a lot of his music, so... Well, you can see that style to yourself as well, it even helps. It's like, oh, well, okay, I'm going to send this to get mixed. Wait, I end up mixing it. Hmm. This is wrong. Take it. <laughs> Wait, I need to start talking to it, because I am the person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah. Sis Anger gets four Nurgles out of five. <laughs> Why Nurgles? Bear Moth. Yeah, Come on, man. We completely forgot. Important. Yeah. Quite a while. Yeah. Important to note, he's named after the actual god of disease, not the god of disease in um, Warhammer 40k. Well, Warhammer yeah, generally. Name straight out, though. Yeah. Anyway, next song: No Rain, No Rainbows. <laughs> Welcome to Power Ballad. I honestly cannot be fucked with this song. I. I honestly, I, you know, again, goose egg. It gets no score. It is just dull, and it's it's not even the interestingly dull. Like, I mean, okay, Road of Resistance and Amore are dull as all bilge, but they're interestingly dull in that they have all the right elements to make them good songs. They're just not used. No Rain, No Rainbows has none of the right elements, so it could never be a good song. Okay, it has one right element in that the singer is decent, but that's it. Well, to be fair, that's still a pretty important part of a power ballad to have a good singer. Yeah, but generally... Well, it's a power ballad. <laughs> yeah. Good power ballads are few and far between. In fact, I'm trying to think of good power ballads. Going to end up about the again. Probably. Uh, I can't really be asked with this song in terms of reviewing it, to be honest. It's just dull. It's boring. Boring! Well, boring! At least you actually did a good job singing it. I mean, when listening to it, it just puts me in mind of um, one of Nostalgia Critic's reviews uh, when he reviewed um, Junior, the Arnie film where he actually g ends up getting pregnant. And that film, that boys up with that film, too. I don't know. But um, it's one of those cases of, this should be really funny. But, I mean, it's sort of like, they've got Arnie pregnant. <laughs> and yet it's boring. This is what No Ruin, No Rainbows is. It's Junior. It's Arnie being pregnant, and yet it's dull. <laughs> That's the best analogy. <laughs> God, uh. Um. Yeah, I think we're going a bit sidetracked, because <laughs> it's a power ballad. There's not really much you can say about it. Yeah. 
I think one occasional parallel, but it's usually kind of cases that come up in that one part of the album where I just, you know, forget it happens. Yeah. Because I'm there, I'll be sitting there kind of like, yeah, let's see what we can And the next song comes on, it's like, what was the last song again? Yeah. <laughs> well, it especially feels like that because it's. The next song might as well go on because fuck that piece of shit. Um, Tales of the Destinies. Tales of Dream Theater, will well, it reminds me of several prog rock bands. I just I can't pinpoint a key one. It's sort of like yes, the nice um, bits of Hawkwind. It's just it's just one of those. Okay, I forgive you for the last song. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it does. Some parts of it remind me of Jim Perry to me because I was mentioning the other. Yeah, maybe kind of. That's very much. I don't think they do a lot. Mm. So. Especially with the crowding in there as well. Mm. I mean, it's one of those, this really is a sort of build up and build up type song. The only thing is, it's a build up song whilst also just bouncing all over the place at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a medley in itself, whilst also still somehow something like the same song. Mm. <laughs> of course, there is one bit which is really out of the blue and it's sort of like, what? At the two, twi- 2 minutes 26 mark, I actually timed this. I was sort of like, when does this exactly happen? I'm curious. There is a random ragtime... It's a musical sting. It's a brief ragtime musical sting. It's sort of like, what? What? Ragtime? What? <laughs> I mean, why is it even with that? I mean, if, if it was... If it was an album by Mr. Bungle or uh, Fade No More by extension or um, Primus, any band like that, I'd be sort of like, yeah, ragtime, whatever. But here it's just, what? Okay. <laughs> that, so that happened. Uh, yeah, so it's just, it wasn't particularly me, you can't mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have to listen to some of their stuff so I can get what you're talking about. I think it's in the sky, it does that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's not it doesn't have a stick like that, it more kind of is just gets through nine minutes or so of kind of prog rock, hardcore, speamer, metal, whatever the bloody fuck is going through. It's something just something you, you just feel like you're inside a bar in the middle of the Wild West. It's like, what? Mm. <laughs> Where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, it's just, it is a really great song. It's just that ragtime bit just throws you. It's sort of like, huh? As a kid, you've got guitar wanking. You know, actually, with decent songwriting. Well, it's not really guitar. It's not guitar wanking. It's guitar love making. <laughs> yeah. Guitar caressing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. It, you know, guitar wanking or guitar fucking. Let's not beat around the bush like wanking would be. Um, let's call it what it is. Guitar fucking. That's what Dragon Force does. They just fuck the guitars. They don't make love to the guitars. They just want to produce as much sound in as quick succession and get their own release whilst the listener is left waiting for their own personal climax and get nothing from it. This is guitar lovemaking. They're showing their technical expertise and they're actually really bringing you to your own personal climax. This is when a band knows how to treat you with music. I suppose it's this, they're just going, I am the mighty masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that in there somewhere, didn't you? Well, you only mentioned doing Tessit about seven times, so... <laughs> I, I'd give this four and a half Rick Wakemans out of five. I'm sure I can think up more depending on the situation. Most likely, yes. Yeah. Um, finally, we have The One. Now, this is an experiment in contrast because The One is also a ballad. But, at least for me, I'm not sure about you, but for me, it's a ballad done well. Well, it's more like, less, less of a power ballad and more of like a prog ballad. Hmm. I mean, I, it's definitely. I have kind of a problem with it. I mean, power metal is one of the kind of subgenres I'm not that into anyway. Mm. I mean, 
Yeah, I'm not going to be a metal to terms. I'm okay with that. Something like Blind Guardian, for example. Mm. And yeah, this is good. But a lot of it just doesn't really catch my attention. It's, uh, it's trying a bit too hard. Hmm. I mean, this. I mean, it's definitely a love song. I mean, the lyrics are something along the line. It's basically doing the "You are the one." Yes. So on and so forth. I can't be bothered to remember the lyrics. It. It's English. It's very Englishy. Well, it's not entirely surprising. She's doing she's done a pretty damn good job singing English. Oh, it's. I think it's not her language. It's one of those, for someone who English is not their first language, it works really well. Probably not even a second language. Yeah, that's pretty basic for my lyrics. Mm. Uh, But yeah, I really like the one. I mean, I am a bit of a sucker for this kind of ballad. You know, a love song ballad is one of those, I'm listening, and it does have prog rocky elements. So... Kind of, well, the problem with uh, November November is, is you know, oh, guitar fucking, I guess. Yeah. Not quite on the same level as before, but it's just, well, let's just put a bunch of notes in here and string them together. Mm. And yeah, it makes it sound kind of, come on, put up your lighters and weave them around and possibly sit apart to the guy's hair next to you. <laughs> Especially if you're in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Which is sound kind of like a hair metal song. Mm. A hair metal power ballad, isn't that? Um, yeah. That's not hard. It actually sounds like the song has been written without yeah. actually care. <laughs> yeah, it it feels like they actually put effort into writing this. It feels more like Ingrid, you know. Yeah. A, a generic parallel. Hmm. I mean, I have given it f- um, five Ingwies out of five. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> I also found the fact that the guitar sound actually works here. So. Mm-hmm. With the ones earlier on in the Dragon Force songs, it just kind of just throws it in with the shit as they keep having a solo. In this case, it actually kind of adds a nice bridge in the middle. Yeah, and it just, it feels like a big song. It it feels like a good ending song. Which is something also we've been talking about a lot, and you, know, that you need a good song to end on, so you need a good song to open with. Mm. This album doesn't have a good song to open with, but it does have a good song to end on. So. Mm. Well, it's basically, as the album progresses, it does get better. With the exception of oh, Amor, huh? Just of Amor. Yeah. Just going down my own personal scorings. If you take Amore out, it improves as it progresses. With Matataro being the odd one out in the, it's the best on the album, and it's halfway through. <laughs> but yeah, I really like it. I think it's a good song. It just so many times like it's doing the same kind of thing as Never in the Rainbow, but better. Hmm. Should have made the Rainbow kind of uh, irrelevant, really. Yeah. Redundant. <laughs> yeah, that's more yeah. a better word for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next, well, here we get into the differences between English and Japanese releases. Should we just cover the one now? Yeah. Um, so there's the English and Japanese versions of the one. Um, I personally feel that either way works really well. Uh, I, think it's, I think it was originally written for English lyrics anyway. Mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember being about a while ago saying it actually was originally written to be sung in English. Oh, fair Which enough. Um, score for me doesn't change between versions. Um, interestingly enough, the Japanese version does still have English lyrics here and there. It's just not the main driving force. Hmm. I think it's kind of sort of... It could have sounded a lot worse if it hadn't been the fact that Suka actually sang really well in English. Yeah. It's a pretty thing to do when uh, you're a band that's known for singing it not in English mm. and uh, release a song that's in English. It's like, okay, this could be horribly, horribly wrong here, there's something to live with people after this. Yeah. They managed to pull it off, so you know, oh. they actually had the balls to stick it out on an album that was in the country with that language's form as well. Mm. So, okay, here we go, have a song of us singing in your language, but it isn't our first language. Mm. Bands in general singing in a language that isn't their own, that really feels like there's. Or, they're going, we want to expand ourselves, we want to show that we have the confidence to try anything. Hmm. Well, I just an example of that actually is uh, Tattoo. Because mm-hmm. all three of their albums have been released both in Russian and English. Yeah. Basically we recorded all of the stuff. Each of their albums have been recorded in English afterwards, so it's not in Russian. So that's actually really interesting. That reminds me of um, Alexander Ryback, another violinist and singer. Uh, I believe he's Norwegian, and he released all his albums in both English and Norwegian. Okay, that's cool. 
Um, well, it's kind of impressive to actually have an entire album totally re-recorded in a different language. Mm. Finally, Syncopation, which on the Japanese release would actually be in the place of From Dusk Till Dawn. It's annoying, because both their songs are really good. Yeah. I mean, one of them. <laughs> it's funny, it sounds like another song where you know, the guitarists are actually put a lot of effort into making the playing sound actually good. Mm. My... The only problem I have with it, I mean, I really like this song, but the one problem I have with it is it's not syncopated. <laughs> it was just, you know, time and time you're talking about syncopation. Yeah. I mean... And not be syncopated. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that syncopation would not necessarily mean the content of the song, mm, but, that, yeah. but the fact of the matter is that syncopation is a term for a style of singing. You sing off beat, and it's very on beat, which is. Mm. It's a bit distracting when you consider the name of the song, but in terms of the song content itself, it's a really good song. It is, because like, I just get to, I want that song, but even if I went out and bought the album right now, I wouldn't get it. Mm. Well, fuck you, reason nothing. Yeah. It's really baffling. I do not get this whole system of different countries having different versions of albums. Like, the amount of different versions of garbage albums there are. I've a lot of stuff there as well. They're sort of like... What, so, what version is the version that's European? I... I what? <laughs> Seriously, I don't get this. Uh, I just think out the lyrics for syncopation because someone's translated them. Mm-hmm. One line is just, a rhythm is a syncopation of love, draw the shape of love in the night sky. On the small fly dancing away, swings into the sky. <laughs> okay. I was just something, a syncopation of love is, you know, it doesn't imply that it is not intended as a musical term in this case. No. But generally, when it comes to contexts like that, the musicians will actually try to offset the lyrics to really emphasise the whole concept of, you know, a syncopation of love. Can you tell I've done a lot of lyrical analysis in the past few months? Well, you're a music journalist, you kind of need to. Yeah, but... Literally, you're wrong. Yeah, but anyway, um, no, I really like this song. I just wish that it, it reflected more the implications of the title. Mm. So I think, that's as far as the song itself goes, it is really damn good. Mm. <laughs> Which makes it even more annoying that I can't have it without importing a, it's not the copy of the same album. Mm. Or, you know, illegally downloading it, I can But <laughs> I might actually buy this album anyway, because I, I like it. Maybe there's a couple of things in it. Like. I'm iffy about it. It'd be a bit like... Um, it's kind of like the reverse of Goodbye to the Machine, where there's... Four good songs. <laughs> three... Four... Uh, well, there are five bad songs, in our opinion. Oh, yeah, I thought you were the thing is, having like a third of the album be bad is a lot better than having a third of the album be good. Yeah. <laughs> At least you won't feel cheated out of money. Mm, sure do. So. Mm. Well, I'm sure I can, you know, deal with most of it. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those. Some people might like Road of Resistance and Karate. Oh, yeah, and... Huh? Probably not they do like. Well, if you like... I have a five includes both Amore and Road of Resistance. So it's all... It's like, okay, I disagree with you. Fair enough. If you like them, more power to you. My feelings on Amore have been made abundantly clear. I mean, I would say that, yeah, Road of Resistance, Amore, and Nirin, Nirin, but I don't mind them. I don't like hate them like you do. On the other hand, they're also very much clear weak songs compared to the rest of them, so... I think generally our opinions are quite similar other than the fact that they're more extreme in both directions. Mm. Um, Syncopation gets four off the beaten tracks out of five. <laughs> can you get this up? I can quite work out what it was. <laughs> I was contemplating either doing four police officers or, you know, just beat. This <laughs> yeah. um, is not, not beat off. <laughs> <laughs> Now we've had enough of that with Amore and Road of Resistance. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good album. I like it. Yeah. Uh, it's, in my opinion, considerably better than the first one. <laughs> um, so, if it was originally the first album, I would be just a case of, oh, the baby metal. Your taste is mostly bad. <laughs> no, I'd be like, oh, the baby metal. You better like the second album. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, for those who want an average, that's 3.071428.5 recurring out of five. Which is that leads to the board. Yeah. Um, it's below the average scores that it's gotten, but that's because we're not paid. <laughs> that's the best reason. <laughs> Why are we not paid? Who's fixed us? Well, we need to sort out getting more viewers, that's why. And then everyone can bribe us to give you good reviews. Mm. Wait, that's just the lecture. <laughs> but yeah. That's never gonna happen anyway, I'm too opinionated about things. Yeah. If I something shit, then it's gonna be shit. Yeah, I can't imagine a published magazine actually having as passionate an opinion as Amore did from me. Especially now, it's going to take some video or something tomorrow and be like, oh, who makes new albums here? On the back, just in quotes. What the Francis flying fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, Francis Drake fuck. I want to say that on like an album's leaving man. <laughs> what? What the Francis Drake fuck is this? <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for this episode. Next episode will actually be next week, and we'll be reviewing the new Perturbator album, possibly yeah, covering yeah. other Perturbator songs as well, because we've never done it before. That's true. I'll uh, probably at least be covering the bonus EP that comes with the album, because there's actually some pretty good stuff on that. I'll need you to send me that, because I didn't get it. Yeah, there's a separate link for Sunday June, but... All right, so... Uh, but it's like seven songs, which are, I think there's two remixes, uh, two instrumentals, one remix, and four new songs. I think. Cool. Really good stuff there. <laughs> so it comes with the uh, vinyl and special edition, so I'm as well do it at the same time. What we can do is we'll do the main album, and then with the bonus EP, we'll do a sort of supplemental episode. Oh, well, I think by that time I might actually have my copy because it's been shipped down there. Fair dues. Yeah. We're just in the main edition. Hmm. Anyway, that's us signing off. It's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.